Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases must be been away. We call me down, people can't get in our way. Thank <laughs> you. 
all right, all right. I, I, I cannot enter into uh, <laughs> the word I without some type of praise and worship. And what better way to start than just by saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I forget that I'm supposed to, that, you know, I'm, people are watching me. And I, I wish it was a way we can all, one day I'm going to figure out how we can watch all of this um, uh, together. So I, uh, I, I'm just grateful. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to be here on a Wednesday night for our Wednesday night Holy Revival Church Bible study. And I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I feel good. I feel wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm here at home. And uh, uh, you can see I have my, my grandsons looking over my shoulder when they were little. So I am, uh, <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh, somebody said on Zoom we can all see it together. Well, okay. Well, y'all gotta I gotta take baby steps. I'm trying to get used to this YouTube live stuff. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta I gotta take you know baby steps. So anyway, I'm glad to have all of you here and broadcast on YouTube live and Facebook live on my personal page as well as on the Holy Revival Church page. So, and uh, Sister April just sent me a message that she's looking at me on her big screen TV. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy that you are here. And I'm uh, excited to continue on in this word on to, to, tonight. Um, let's pray and, and get started. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And Lord, we may have to play that song again at the end of the lesson tonight, but we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for each and every one of us. We thank you for the anointing, Lord, that you have placed upon this ministry. We thank you, Lord, for every person that is watching and hearing us right now, Lord. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to each and every person. Meet them where they are. Somebody, meet them where they are, Lord. And Father, I ask, Lord, to move by your spirit. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy that's been extended to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you would meet needs tonight, answer prayer tonight, and feed us one more time. Lord, your goodness, from your goodness, the garden of your goodness, the garden of your grace, the garden of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We are in the book of Ruth. And last week, we, we are, we're, in, we're in the third chapter. Uh, last week we ended and it was so good. I believe it was so good. Uh, where Bowen, uh, she ate with him and his workers and, and we, we really saw how a relationship was being formed. And, and I believe that's what the book of Ruth is more of. Well, there's several lessons within the book of Ruth. And, but the great, I believe the greater message is about relationship. And we can learn from the book of Ruth 
how to even cultivate a relationship. So I want to pick up on, on in chapter three, verse one, and I want to uh, I want to show you something. It says, then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it be, may be well with thee? Now, at this particular time, uh, by this particular time, brother, Ruth and Naomi have had more than enough time to get to know one another. They've been around each other, and, and uh, 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 they were... The barley and, and wheat harvest had taken place, and 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 now Ruth finds herself having drawn or attracted the attention of Boaz. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people miss in this particular in this particular story, and I know people miss it in the reality of our lives today. According to the customs of that particular day, we can't say that, that Ruth and Boaz were dating in the way that we think of dating in, in, in modern culture. Boaz definitely was attracted to Ruth. That's a given. We established that last week. He was definitely attracted to Ruth. But they were not paired off as a couple with 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 one on one time and with each other, rather they spent their time together in the context of a group. The men and women who worked for Boaz in the harvest were present at the dinner that he invited Ruth to. See, from God's perspective, there is much in the dating game that well, today there's a, there's much in the dating game the way we see it and the way we approach it that works against forming healthy and lasting relationships. See, the way we view dating, it really works against us more than it works for us. Because dating means the continual making and breaking of, of casual romantic relationships Patterns that teach us more how to end relationships than to how to make relationships, how to make them last. Additionally, dating can be a, a, a relatively superficial way to get to know someone. Because every person in a dating relationship sends their representative. They put on a mask. You know, for example, uh, many women have been deceived into thinking a man is a good man, a nice man, because he is nice to them in a dating relationship. Of course he is. He's going to be nice as long as he's dating. Because in a dating relationship, he wants something in that relationship. A better gauge to, to, to measure the man or the woman is to see how they act towards others in a group setting. See, it's always about let me go out. Let me take her out. Let me go out with him. Let me go out one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody is always on their best behavior because when you're dating, like I said, I like to say, you know, use the term that you are sending your representative. Nobody, the real you is not showing up. If you if you can think about anybody you've ever dated, any relationship you've been in, you didn't get to know that real person, the, the real whoever you were dating, until later in the relationship. In the beginning, it's all about, so one of the better gauges is if you were to go out with a group to see how that person interacts with some with other people. Because sooner or later, the way they treat other people is the way they're going to treat you. So, so we see Ruth and, 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 and Boaz, though Boaz was interested in Ruth, 
And Boaz was a wealthy man. He had enough money. He could have did whatever he wanted to do, take root wherever he wanted to take her, show her a good night out on the town or whatever. But he chose to have root to, to, to court her, if you will, in, in, in a group setting. So over the, the, the period of, of the, 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 the harvest, Ruth and Boaz got to know each other pretty well. But there were always other people around. By seeing what kind of people the other was around in a larger group, Ruth got a chance to see how Boaz interacted even with his workers. She got an opportunity to see how he was in a group setting, and Boaz got an opportunity to see how Ruth was. Because if it was just a one-on-one, -on -one, anytime it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, especially initially, the real person seldom comes out. So it goes on to say, and now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens I was. Behold, the winter with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down on the floor. Now, this is going to upset a bunch of women that's watching me <laughs> because what Naomi did, Naomi knew that Ruth could be best taken care of if she was married as opposed to just being with her. So Naomi, the, the elder stateswoman, the woman with the wisdom, she suggested that Ruth appeal to Boaz for marriage. So for all of you women that think there's something wrong with you approaching a man, and I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it, it isn't. But I know I hear a lot of women saying, I want God to send me my Boaz. I want God to give me my Boaz. I, I, God is going to give me my Boaz. Naomi didn't tell Ruth, okay, he, he's interested in you. You wait for him to make the first move. Mm -hmm. You wait for him. She said, no, I'm going to teach you how to appeal to Boaz for marriage. Now, she, she said, now, now listen, let, let, let me read this again. She said, now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou wast. Behold, the winter with barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down on the floor. But make not thyself known unto the man until he, have, he, have, he shall have done eating and drinking. Now, you might easily think that, that this was inappropriate. Why would uh, 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 Ruth subject herself to going after Boaz? I mean, we uh, I said there's two scriptures. Every man and every woman that has ever had any time in the church would know very well. The men know why I submit to your husbands, and the women know a man who finds a good thing, finding a wife, finds a good thing. Now, it is, now, now, people may you may think it was inappropriate for Naomi to suggest this to, to Ruth to appeal to Boaz for marriage, and it's possible to think that Naomi plotted with Ruth to make her a, a man trap, to go out and and hunt down a, a reluctant Boaz for marriage, but not at all. Naomi's suggestion to Ruth was rooted in a particular, a, a peculiar custom in ancient Israel, the meaning behind the word, the, 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 the Hebrew word goel, G-O-E-L. Mm -hmm. See, when Naomi asks Ruth, I want you to follow me on this, this you're going to learn something about relationships here. This was when 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 Boaz when when, when Naomi asked, is, is he not our relative? She reminded Ruth that Boaz, Boaz was their family Goel. 
Now, this is sometimes translated as kinsman or redeemer. And a goel had a specifically defined role in Israel's family life. The kinsman or redeemer was responsible to buy a fellow Israelite out of slavery. All right, hear, hear, me, hear me, follow me. He was responsible to be the avenger of blood to make sure the murderer of a family member answered to the crime. He was also responsible to buy back family land that had been forfeited. So the, the, the kinsman redeemer, the Goel, was responsible to safeguard the persons, the property, and the posterity of the family. In other words, Boaz being one of uh, 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 of, of Naomi's husband's relative, he had a responsibility to do whatever he could to honor the family name. And since Boaz was recognized, he was a, a recognized Goel of the family of Elimelech, the deceased husband of Naomi and the father-in-law of Ruth, Ruth could appeal to him to safeguard the posterity of Elimelech's family and take her in marriage. Y'all get that? So in other words, it wasn't out of order for Ruth to say, okay, I, I'm gonna, or for Naomi to tell Ruth, and look, I'm, a I'm gonna show you how to trap this man. I'm gonna show you how to trap this, this, this wealthy man. The custom of the the land was that a relative of the husband or a relative of the family, by their custom, he could come in and he can do whatever he needed to do to maintain the posterity of that family. If Boaz did not fulfill this duty towards Elimelech, though he was deceased, then the direct family in name of Elimelech Elimelech would pack with Paris. So now, so Naomi, she tells Ruth, wash yourself. She was showing the knowledge of that older woman because I said it last week, I broke it down last week, how with Naomi, with Ruth rather, Ruth attracted the wealthiest man in the land in a way that women don't do today. See, because a woman today feels like she got to put on her best face. She got to put on a dress that's fitting and, and showing all of her, her curves and accentuating the positive and, and her hair have to be whipped up and her weave have to be tight and everything has to be in place for her to attract a man. Ruth attracted the wealthiest man in the land, working in the field, no makeup, bending over, picking up the corn, picking up the wheat, picking up the barley, bending over, working, sweating, hair undone. And when Boaz asked, who was she? When they responded, and people, this is so important. If we can get this, we would eliminate being caught up in crazy relationships. When the people asked Boaz, when Boaz asked his workers, who is this woman? They didn't say, because obviously Ruth had to be a beautiful woman. She had to be a good looking woman. No doubt she probably was a shapely woman, but if she's working in the field, she's not wearing anything to accentuate her shape. She's wearing whatever it needs for her to be out in the field, gleaning and, and picking up weed and picking up barley and all of that. And the man said, who is she? When he asked who was she, they didn't say, hey, that's that beautiful group. They said, that's that Moabitess woman that came with Naomi.
that stayed with Naomi when, when Naomi lost her husband and her son, she was all alone. That's that Moabitess woman who stayed with her. What they were doing, they were describing her character, not her exterior appearance. When we start looking at people and when we start going after and allowing people in our lives based on their character, not just based on their appearance, we'll find ourselves not even not stuck in, in crazy and, and dysfunctional relationships. Naomi, in her advice to Ruth, when she said, therefore, wash yourself. She showed her, her keen knowledge of, of male behavior. She instructed Ruth to make herself pretty and smelling good. You're not going out to the field now, Ruth. Now it's time to be a woman. Now it's time to look good. Now it's time to smell good. Anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and to leave Boaz alone while he ate. She said, don't make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Now, let me check this out. Then he said, uncover his feet and lie down. At the appropriate time, Naomi instructs Ruth to go in, uncover his feet, and lie down. Now, some might think this was a, a, a provocative gesture, as if Ruth was, was told to provocatively offer herself sexually to Boaz. That's not what she was doing. It's not what she was doing at all. This was not how this gesture was understood in that day. In the culture of that day, this was understood as an act of total submission. In that day, this was understood to be the role of a servant to lay at their master's feet and be ready for any command of the master. So when Naomi told Ruth to lie down at Boaz's feet, she told her to come to him in a totally humble and submissive way. That don't sound like the 2020 woman. This is for all of y'all to say you want God to give you a Boaz. You want God to give you that, that ideal man. The word is teaching us how to go about it, but we choose to go our own, uh, 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 our own in our own way. Naomi is teaching Ruth how to be humble and submissive, not to a point to where it's demeaning or 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 it's 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 making it's lowering your self esteem. This is a woman sharing her an older woman sharing her wisdom with a younger woman. But don't lose sight of the, the, the bigger picture. Ruth came to claim a right. She came to claim a right. She wasn't trying to sleep with Boaz. She wasn't trying to get anything. All she wanted was Ruth for was Boaz to step in and keep the name of Elimelech alive, his family's name alive. Boaz was her Goel, her kinsman redeemer, and she had the right to expect him to marry her and raise up a family to perpetuate the name of Elimelech. But Naomi wisely counseled Ruth to not come as a victim demanding her rights, but as a humble servant trusting in the goodness of the kinsman redeemer. She said to Boaz, I respect you, I trust you, and I put my faith in your hands. Oh, Lord. She said, he will tell you what you should do. Of course, this was a situation that had the potential for disaster. Because if Boaz should mistreat Ruth in some way, but from all indications, Boaz was a, a, a gentleman. He was a kind man. He, 
He was a fair man. Even his workers, when they saw him, they blessed him and he blessed them. And Naomi and Ruth had the chance to get to know Boaz. They knew what kind of man he was, that he was a good man, a godly man, one to whom Ruth could confidently submit. A lot of men say, you're supposed to submit to me. I'm the head of the house. Submit to me. You're supposed, you, you don't know how to submit. But if she is to submit, what is she submitting to? Is she submitting to a good man, to a godly man? Or is she submitting to somebody that's just taking a verse of scripture and trying to twist it and turn it and use it to their own advantage? They knew the type of man that Boaz was. Naomi knew the type of man that Boaz was. She didn't have any problem encouraging her to submit. All these men running around talking about submit. Submit, you supposed to submit to me. What, am, what is she submitting to? What type of man? No woman in her right mind is going to submit to a man that's not going anywhere, that's not doing anything. Why should she? I'm pretty sure Naomi would not have taught Ruth to submit to this man if she knew he was a no good, womanizing, trifling, lazy man. Men, before you talk about having a woman submit to you, what is she submitting to? What kind of man is she submitting to? In the marriage relationship, many wives wish they had a husband who loved and cared and treated them the way Boaz did towards Ruth. But see, at the same time, do they show the same kind of humble submission and respect Ruth showed to Boaz? I, put, I performed a wedding a couple of weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, and I asked the woman, do you promise to love, honor, obey, and submit to the will of this man that you marry? She looked at me, and first she, I didn't think she was going to answer it. Then she finally said yes, and somebody hollered out. I'm surprised she said yes to that one. See, that's because today submission is looked at as a negative thing. Submission is looked at as a weakness. A woman looks at submitting. I ain't submitting to no man. I'm not submitting to him. He's not my daddy. I, he's not God. I submit to God and God only. But you want a godly man. If God, God, oh my God, God is not going to send you a godly man, a good man. Oh God, this is going to sting right here. God is not going to send you a godly man, a good man. He's not going to send you his best when he knows you have a problem with submitting. On the other hand, men, God is not going to send you his best. He's not going to send you a woman ready to submit when he knows you're not ready to be that type of leader. I taught a message the other day on being a prayer warrior. I said that if ladies, if you want to find out if a man is really interested in you, see a prayer warrior goes and stands and 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 and, and, and fights a, a he fights a spiritual battle for you. Prayer warriors are in the trenches spiritually. And as a couple, as a, a and especially in the marital relationship, you need to have a prayer warrior. You need to ask a man, is he willing to be the prayer warrior over your family? 
Is he willing to step out and be the prayer warrior to fight the forces of hell and the demonic forces that come against your marriage? Is he willing to do that? Ruth said to Naomi, all that you say to me, I will do. Ruth humbly and wisely received the counsel of her mother-in-law, Naomi. She listened to what he had to say. Now, she went down to the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the the heap of heap of corn and uncovered his feet and laid her down. There was a good reason why Boaz slept at the fleshing threshing floor. These were the days of the judges when there was much political and, and social instability in Israel, and it wasn't unusual for gangs of thieves to, to come and steal all the hard-earned grain that a farmer had grown. <laughs> Boaz slept at the threshing floor to guard his crop against the kind of, a, of tax that were described in, in 1 Samuel chapter 23. So Ruth did just as her mother-in-law suggested and recommended she heard the advice. She said she would do it, and she did it. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. Something startled Boaz. He woke up in the middle of the night and felt somebody at his feet. He didn't know if it was thieves. He didn't know who it was, what it was not being able to see, see clearly because of the darkness. And since he had been there to protect his, his crops against thieves, it must have given him quite a shock to wake up and know someone was there. But this shock quickly turned to wondering when he found out the visitor was a woman. Now it's going to be interesting what's going to happen here. Ruth said to Boaz, and he said, he said, who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. In other words, Ruth is saying, take me under your wing, for you are a close relative. Ruth is showing humility and submission. She presented herself as Boaz's servant. When she said, take me under your wing, here she boldly asked Boaz to take her in marriage. I've, I've been asked many times, Pastor Jane, what do you think about a woman proposing to a man? Ruth was essentially proposed into Boaz. I wonder if most women that, that, that say they want God to send them a, a Boaz, I wonder if they realize that's what Ruth was doing. Ruth was saying to Boaz, take me in marriage. This was a, a, a culturally relevant way to say, I am a widow. Take me as your wife. Oh, Lord. Ruth was the first woman <laughs> to propose to a man. And you, even today, you hear women talking about, I ain't proposing to no man. I ain't going to. I had women tell me, I'm not even asking a man out on a date. And I, well, you stay at home then. Keep waiting for a man to come and ask you. I, now, now, let me, I don't want nobody to misconstrue this because this is live going out all over the world. I, it don't matter to me 
one way or another, you do what you want to do. All I'm telling you is what the word of God says. And the word says, Ruth asked Boaz. Everybody say, you know, no, no woman ain't supposed to ask a man. Ruth asked Boaz. Read it for yourself. She said, take me in marriage. Oh, Lord. By her saying, for you are a close relative. This shows that this was not an inappropriate thing for Ruth to do towards Boaz. It was bold, but not inappropriate. Oh, Lord. It was a bold thing to do, but it wasn't inappropriate. I can't get that out of my head because I heard so many women say, God going to give me my Boaz. He going to give me my Boaz. Well, Ruth asked him to marry her. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth submitted her. Ruth humbled herself and said, take me as your wife. Oh, Lord. And it was an appropriate thing to do. Ruth understood this as she identified Boaz as her close relative or her goel. And though deceased, Elimelech, Elimelech had the right to have his family name carried on. And as Goel, Boaz had the responsibility to do this for Elimelech. He had the responsibility to do it for Elimelech. See, you got a whole bunch of women sitting waiting. For a man to ask them to marry him. God going to send me my Boaz. I'm waiting for God to send me my Boaz. And here Ruth asked her Boaz to marry her. I know somebody don't like that, but it's the word anyway. Boaz had the responsibility to do this for Elimelech. This could only happen through Boaz marrying Ruth and providing children to carry on the name of Elimelech. Ruth boldly yet humbly and properly sought her rights. I see you, Pastor Benjamin. <laughs> I see you. Yeah, I know that's a deep one right there. There's a whole bunch of women. They done missed that part. I done heard women time and time again. God is going to give me my Boaz. God going to give me my Boaz. And yet Ruth went after her Boaz. She asked him to marry her. In the middle of the night. Laying at the foot of his, uh, he's laying in, 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 in what is considered a barn, the threshing floor. <laughs> at, the, at his feet in the middle of the night, startled the man. I can imagine that Bo, Boaz probably was so happy it wasn't thieves. He said, yeah, come on. I'm, I'm just happy it ain't no thieves in here now. Let's go ahead and do this. Because obviously he was attracted to Ruth anyway. Then look what Boaz, how he answered. And he said, blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, and as much as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Now, oh Lord, this is good, y'all. Boaz was an older man. So not only did Ruth Ask the man to marry her. She didn't, and, and, and it wasn't even about what I love about this. It wasn't even about the money. It wasn't even about Boaz's wealth because the initial attraction that they both had for each other for, it was for what they saw in each other in the company of other people. So now Boaz is saying to Ruth. 
you young and you beautiful, yet you didn't go after the younger men. You came after me. I'm an old dude. You asking me to marry you. You asking me. You didn't go after the young. You didn't, whether they were rich or poor, you chose to approach me. A lot of women always say, and I'm, I'm telling you, I have, a, I have friends that have said it. I remember one time a friend of mine asked me to go to a concert on Facebook, sent me a message. I said, yeah, I'll go. I heard from some friends of mine, she, that, that was wrong of her. She shouldn't be asking you out. She shouldn't, no woman shouldn't be asking no man out. And the women that did it, they still single today. When you people look, I'm going to tell you something. You believe it if you want to. I really don't care. The Holy Spirit will lead you in all things. I'm talking about if you want a husband, you want a wife, you want somebody, you know, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all things. But one thing I have found, the Holy Spirit seldom leads you the way you think he's going to lead you. <laughs> so he may lead you to ask a man out. But you so full of pride and, and your ego is so you thinking that every man is going to mistreat you because the last dude you was with mistreated you. So you ain't asking this man out, even though you trusting the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit very seldom leads us in the direction we think he's going to lead us. Boaz said, and now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people does know that thou art a virtuous woman. Oh, my God. And look, look, y'all, look at this. God, I got to, oh, I got to get adjusted here. This is good. The people knew, what was, what was Ruth known for? Ruth was not known for being a gorgeous woman. She was not known for being, you know, a, a Beyonce lookalike or whatever you want to call Ruth was known for being a woman of integrity. She was known for being a woman uh, that, that saw something in Naomi that made her leave her people, to leave her homeland, to come and be beside Naomi. Ruth was known for her character. And here the wealthiest man in the land is saying, everybody know you are a virtuous woman, not because you walking around with a long white dress on and, and screaming hallelujah and well, got a Bible under your arm. She was dirty in the field working when Boaz first saw her. No doubt she, her feet were probably dirty. And she's out there in the field. But Boaz is saying, I'm going to give you what you want because all of the people know you are a virtuous woman. I don't have to know. I know everything I need to know about you, Ruth. You are a woman, number one, that is not lazy <laughs> because you were out there working in the field. You are a humble woman. You are a submissive woman. You are a woman of integrity. Oh, are y'all getting this? You talking about you want your Boaz. God is showing you how to get him. Stop worrying about what your weave look like. Stop worrying about how shapely your body is. Stop worrying about, be more concerned with what are you showing from the inside out, not from the outside in. When we begin to see, that's where we miss it, people. And not just even in a dating relationship, we need to start looking at what's inside of a person before we even allow them to get close to us. Not just because she's a pretty woman or she's a good or he's a handsome man. What is their character like? Now, here Ruth has asked Boaz 
to marry her. Well, y'all ought to post that on your Facebook page and see how many arguments you get. Ruth asked Boaz to marry her. And Boaz said, I'm going to give you whatever you want, whatever you ask for. This shows something else wonderful about Boaz. See, Boaz actually, look at this, people. Look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> Both of them. Boaz was the wealthiest man in the land. Yet he felt he was humble. He was such a humble man. He wants to know, Ruth, I'm an older dude. I'm older than you. You could have had one of these young, rich dudes. But you chose me. So Boaz was a humble man. Ruth was a humble woman. What we are seeing, God drawing two people together based on what's inside of them, not based on external forces. No doubt Ruth was a beautiful woman. Boaz was probably a handsome man. But he considered himself unattractive to Ruth and had probably ruled out any idea of romance between them. Naomi, Ruth listened to Naomi. Naomi said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go ask him. <laughs> you gonna ask him? You gonna ask Boaz? But see, this shows something else wonderful about Boaz because even though he was wealthy, he had the right to force himself on upon Ruth as her goel. But he didn't. He wasn't gonna just say, "There's a woman I want, and I have a right." To her, he was kind enough to not act as a goel towards Ruth. And it also shows something else wonderful about Ruth. She based her attraction to Boaz more on respect, more on character, more on what she saw inside of him. See, Ruth, look at this. Ruth followed Naomi because of what she saw inside of Naomi. Boaz was attracted to Ruth by what he saw inside of Ruth. And now Ruth is attracted to Boaz because of what she see inside of him. People, God is trying to tell us something. We didn't have this thing thing all wrong. We going by what we see and, what, and, and all of this external stuff and you get with the most beautiful woman you could ever imagine and her heart is black. You get with the most handsome man you could ever dream of and he has no integrity. He don't even know how to be faithful to one woman. Boaz was attracted to Ruth because of her what? Character. Like I said, we don't know exactly, we don't know how Ruth looked, but we know she was a woman of godly character. Is it eight o'clock? I'm, I'm, I'm going to end right here. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up here next week. But people, God is trying to show us. Even in this time that we are quarantined and and we are are, are, are locked in together, or in our homes or wherever you may be. God has given us an opportunity, number one, to check yourself and to check your heart. 
And if you are, you single and you believe in God for a companion and a mate and, and you want somebody in your life, now God is saying, stop looking at the exterior, even though that's going to be the initial attraction, but begin to look at a person's character. It don't take long to figure out a person's character. It don't take long at all. And like I said at the top of this message, when Ruth and Boaz were together, they were in together. They were always with a group. And so when you see how somebody acts with other people, you get a chance to see their character on display. Mm -hmm. And see, other people can see what you can't see. But you got stars in your eyes. You in love or you want this person. So, you, you know, you may not see it. God is saying, he's saying, we need to look inside, look inside of us and look inside of that person that we may be interested in. We are at chapter three, verse 11. I'm going to pick up at verse 12 next Wednesday. If you enjoyed it, let me, you can just type amen. Let me know. Uh, but Father God, we thank you for this message tonight. I pray, Lord, that every person that heard it received, Lord, something, something, Lord, that, that would lead them and guide them and direct them, Lord. Father, first of all, to self-reflection, to ask you to search their heart, and they would search their heart. And then, Lord, if, if it is someone they desire, a companion, Lord, Give them the wisdom and the spiritual eyes to see, Lord, what's inside that person. And Father, for those that are married, that are in relationships, Lord, I pray, God, that this can be a starting point of a renewal in their relationship. Father, I pray that you would teach us. Holy Spirit, continue to teach us and lead us and guide us. I offer up a prayer as I do daily for those our healthcare professionals, Lord. Continue to keep your hand on uh, protection on them and to cover them. And Father, to keep our children, our grandchildren, cover them, bless them, keep them, direct their paths, Lord. Father, let us be covered from the virus and any other thing that may try to come upon us to harm us. I thank you for this word, and I thank you for everyone that listened and tuned in tonight, Lord. I pray that you would bless them, Lord. I pronounce a blessing of prosperity upon their home. You said I had the authority to do so. I pronounce a blessing of prosperity upon their homes and their lives, Lord. Father, that while others are being laid off, and Father, and if they find themselves their company closing down, their job closing down, Father, that they won't miss a bill, that they'll have the resources, they'll have the money, Lord, Father, take care of the resources, Father, that they won't lose anything. Those that have faith and will trust in you. Oh, God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the blessed Holy Revival. Bless the members, Lord, the family of Holy Revival and Words of Wisdom International, Lord, and bless those that are watching tonight. Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the respect you're so worthy of. And I ask this and many blessings upon this, your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to ask you, if you enjoyed this teaching, please, you can sow a seed in the ministry of Holy Revival Church by going to Cash App, dollar sign, Holy Revival, and you can give there, and that will help our church. And, and not only that, when you sow, I teach my members and those that are connected to me that it's never a money thing, it's a heart thing. Mm. If your heart is for the word of God, if your heart is for seeing other people saved and, and drawn into the kingdom, you will so gladly. Nobody have to beg you, nobody have to pride you, you do it because that's where your heart is. 
So if your heart is for the word going forth and being a blessing, and then when you do that, God is going to bless you. You're not going to lose. See, a lot. Of, can I, I'm going to share this right quick. A lot of people make the mistake, and I always say, they like to think that God is an even money God. God, if I give $100 in this offering, you're going to have to give me my $100 back. God don't operate like that. He always goes exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask or think. So first of all, you're in error believing that. Because when you sow and when you give, God is always going to give back to you more than what you gave. So I encourage you. You want to get a start? You want to get a you want to plant a seed that will say to say, God, I appreciate what I heard tonight. I appreciate what I was fed tonight. Do it at on Cash App Dollar Sign Holy Revival, or you can go to words of wisdom.org and you can give it there. Just mark that it's for holy revival. Amen. And I am, I didn't even introduce myself, but hopefully you know, I am Pastor James Thomas, Pastor of Holy Revival and Words of Wisdom International. Thank you for being here tonight. I hope you enjoyed the message. If you did, you can go back and like, you can go back to Words of Wisdom TV Network and watch it and the other messages that are there. And then on the morning, uh, 7 a.m. prayer movement, I have been teaching every day, seven days a week since October 1st, 2013, 2,400 and I think nine or 10 days now. So I just love teaching the word. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you all for being here. Tell somebody about it and join me next Wednesday or you can join me in the morning at 7 a.m., 7 a.m. prayer movement. It'll be on my Facebook page. I'm everywhere, and, and uh, it's not hard to find where we are. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor Benjamin. I saw you. Thank you for being with me tonight. And uh, I give you guys a hug. I love you. God bless you. And I will see you either tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., or to next Wednesday night <laughs> at 7 p.m. And Sunday, three times, three services, 7 a.m., 11 a.m., and 7 p.m. Amen. God bless you all. Remember what's inside. Look for what's inside. That's what a real person is. God bless you all. Have a good night, everybody. God bless. <laughs>